everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, Year 2, where this year we're reading through and studying the entire New Testament, one chapter at a time. Thanks again for joining us in discovering God's plan and your part in it. Today we are wrapping up Philippians with Philippians chapter 4. Uh, it is no small thing to say that this is definitely the most commonly quoted chapter, at least in Philippians, but also perhaps at times the whole Bible. Uh, certainly you've probably heard some of these passages before. Uh, Before we jump into the meat of Philippians 4, if you're a regular listener of the podcast, it is obvious that we missed the episode yesterday, so today is a double feature. Um, Just for those of you that are regularly listening to us and listening to us in live time, uh, we do have a baby due, perhaps imminently. um, (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) Definitely within the next couple of weeks, I think. We heard the best thing ever the other day. It's like a birth month. Like yeah, your due date is month. a birth month. So September it is. Our official due date, I think, is September 23rd. Yeah. Um, so there there may be gaps. We really, really hope that there is not gaps in the podcast. Uh, but we do do this in our spare time, sometimes early in the morning, a lot of times late at night after the kids are in bed. Um, our lives are about to be a little bit crazy for a little bit. Uh, so if there are gaps, we ask that you are please gracious with us. <laughs> um, and we just don't want you to want you to be blindsided by them. So and apologize um, for yesterday as well as in advance. Well, and, and I was going to say even yesterday, like there are actually times when uh, Jenny is just exhausted. I think it's fair to say between homeschool and uh, <laughs> running around after four kids and working on the fifth one, making its way here. It is a little exhausting. That's not a pity thing. That's just a very right. real life thing. So, so there's a lot on our plates and we super appreciate all the support that we get from you guys, uh, whether it's just listening or leaving a review or those, of, those of you that are financial partners with us, we deeply appreciate what you do for us and how you partner with us. And even if you just listen day in and day out, we really appreciate that. So we, I want to give you like a heartfelt thank you and also just kind of a personal update, which we don't do a ton, uh, but just a little bit of a personal update that a baby is coming soon. And I guess <laughs> I guess we'll say when that happens, um, <laughs> but, but probably you'll know because there won't be any new episodes for like a <laughs> week or something. <laughs> we, we don't know obviously when it's coming and what to anticipate, but I'm sure there, there may be a gap in the podcast. So uh, all that to say thank you. Um, that's why we're a little bit behind today and why there are two episodes today, Philippians four and Colossians one. Um, so with all that being said, Jenny, um, what do you want to jump into here with Philippians four? I think a huge part of the reason you had commented earlier about why this chapter, or at least the verses in this chapter, whether or not, you know, where they're from, uh, why they're so well known is because it is literally just full of encouragement and it is full of like provision specifically encouragement. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people resonate with this because oftentimes, I mean, we've all had these moments in our lives where we feel hopeless and helpless. And these verses get used often in order to encourage or bring people out of that feeling Mm -hmm. or place of helplessness or hopelessness. So I, I too, as Ryan was reading over this chapter, I could just I could quote it in my head without even looking at what he was saying most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is cool to see how God's provision was so evident in Paul's life in ways that we might not really understand if you're not reading it within context, but also just to be encouraged as well, because we face a lot of the same trials and things that Paul went through. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Jenny also tried to fight me. She said that I said uh, Yudia's name incorrectly. And what was I the other thing I said? I believe it's Yodia <laughs> and it's Thessalonica. Those are at least how we said it in Bible quizzing. So, so just so you guys know Could be wrong, on. but sounds better than what Ryan Behind said. Behind the scenes, we're having knockdown, drag out fights about how to pronounce <laughs> Bible yeah, names. 30, 37, uh, 38 weeks pregnant here. I'm definitely not doing that. Um, I think it's I think it's definitely worth noting before we get into the very familiar passages. Philippians 4, 2, I entreat you, uh, Eodia, perhaps, and I entreat Eodia. Syneche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me. Like this is Paul diving into a personal dispute that he is aware of. So it's it's really interesting to me. Um, one, it's a bummer for these two women because they are like forever yeah. enshrined as the the two women that would get not we're not getting along. They're fighting. Um, but it is interesting that Paul, as their apostle and like acting as their pastor, is not scared to dive into like, hey, you two people, like you've done incredible, incredible work for the gospel. And to continue to honor the work being done for the gospel, you got to work out your stuff. And I like pointing out this passage because it is a great reminder that there are times when we have conflicts as believers. Mm -hmm. I I think it's very common that we have conflicts as believers. And it's worth noting that Paul was aware of 
you know, conflicts with believers. And he said, Hey, work it out. Um, continue to honor Christ in your lives and honor Christ by working out your stuff. So I think that's a really interesting piece. And I think it's important to us today. So then I guess right after that is where we get like that major encouragement piece. Um, some things that really stuck out to me, probably things that you've heard many times before, verse four, five, six, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Just again, I say rejoice. Uh, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about everything in prayer and petition. Actually, it's prayer and supplication in our Bible. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, and those are the things that I feel like stuck out right away. The next verse, peace of God surpasses all understanding, fills your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. So it's just that, even just that section alone is just like packed full mm-hmm. of these encouragements to us. Um, I really like verse 5. I'm not sure that I gave that one as much credit growing up or like just kind of skimmed over that one, but let your reasonableness be known to everyone. And I don't know. I think that's like, that is a very humbling verse. This, the word reasonableness in our study Bible says seeking what's best for everyone and not just yourself, which is actually like a reflection of what we talked about the other day. Look, not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Just like, how do we reflect what Christ is up to or what Christ would expect of us and it can be within reasonableness. Like mm-hmm. you need to consider other people above yourself. So mm-hmm. I really like that too. But again, and then it just moves into even more, uh, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just like this whole list of things that I'm sure you've probably heard before. Like those are the things to think about. Um, so I don't know, this section, I feel like is just packed full of things that I've always heard and just major encouragements. This, this week in my job, I've been doing some work on Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs nine. Um, I'm trying to leaf to it in the Bible here, uh, but it, it Proverbs nine talks about, and I think it's verse, uh, man, I should know this right off the top of my head. Um, the, uh, Proverbs nine, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy one is insight. It's essentially like w- what I'm trying to do in the work that I'm doing is show that like exactly what the verse says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Like when we want to be better at anything, we should strive mm-hmm. to honor God first. And that is what I think is at the heart of these, like these are core passages in Philippians four, this, this like four through what, like eight or nine. Um, he's saying like, Hey, listen, God's going to provide for you. And the big thing that you need to do is just continue to go to him. Like, like the key to literally anything in life is, is fearing the Lord and putting him first. And I know that that that's like, I don't want to sound like a cliche, but I kind of want to like push that cliche and be like, no, but really it is. Like if you want to be good at anything, um, honor the Lord wholly and completely in your life. And I think that is what Paul's reminding this church, because again, remember, this is essentially like a fundraiser letter, like an update support letter. And he's saying like, hey, like, um, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Well, if we're rejoicing in the Lord always, what are we doing? We're reminding ourselves that God is at the center of everything we're doing. And we are thankful that God is at work in our lives. Well, and the last verse of this like section, before he even starts talking about God's provision and how they have supported him, he says in verse nine, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. So I think he's kind of alluding to those things beforehand, Mm -hmm. like all those other uh, verses that I just read like a couple minutes ago, all of those things, if we are focused on those, if we're practicing those things, like guaranteed, like if you're not focused on yourself, you're focused on what the Lord wants. Mm -hmm. When you are thinking about what is true, what is honorable, what's just, what's pure, like the God of peace will be with you. If your mind is full of like uncertainty and anger and jealousy, obviously the God of peace is not going to be able to reside with you. So it's interesting that this list was made and he's saying like, continue in these things and God will continue to be your peace. We're not like the, the the negative things you just listed. Like, um, do you remember? Uh, Like jealousy, anger, anger, jealousy. We're not saying that we don't, sense those those, right right and like you will feel those things from time to time 
It's I, not a matter of like you won't experience it. Right. It's within those things. Remind yourself. Remind yourself of these things that are lovely, that are commendable, that are honorable, that are just, what are pure. Um, so I think that's. I will tell you from my own cool. experience, I am very good at justifying why I should stay in those negative things. Mm-hmm. I have every reason to be afraid. I have every reason to be jealous I because I'm right. It's like I, I'm very good at doing that for myself. But I will tell you. Um, especially recently, I've been really trying hard um, to f- to fear the Lord so that I grow in everything else. And, and we've been in some bad places <laughs> where we have felt very justified in all of the things that made us frustrated or angry or jealous or whatever. And it leaves you in this like totally empty pa- place that is very absent of God's peace. We are a million percent not perfect people. Um, we do try to learn from our mistakes. And some of the biggest mistakes I've made is justifying staying in negative places Mm -hmm. instead of doing what God has asked me to do. And I, I, again, I will say I'm very good and very experienced at convincing myself I'm right when I actually should be doing what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. And, and I will tell you from my experience, like it, it's not a, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to justify yourself. It's always a better thing to keep God at the center of what you're doing. It is not a natural thing, and it's something you have to kind of retrain yourself to do. Mm-hmm. And so I just encourage you to, to retrain yourself to do that. Now, we round out the letter with probably the, like the most famous coffee cup verse. Um, <laughs> it, so let's see. Um, we'll start in verse 11. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever – this is very important – for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content – I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So there it was. That was verse 13. Yes. We have pulled very professionally and very well pulled Philippians 413 out of context. And it now means you can be a literal superhero. Can I say something? (laughs) Our study Bible is very helpful because I think I've often heard this and just like whatever you whatever you need to make it through. God's going to make you. I feel like it's on like an 80s motivational poster with like (laughs) jumping over hurdles or something. (laughs) They used to be in our class. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, our study Bible says. Word for word. This is this does not mean God will bless whatever a person does. It means God gives believers the strength to do whatever he asks them to do. Yeah. And I think that's so important because, again, it takes our eyes from ourselves and moves it towards God and what his plan is. And I think that's the whole emphasis of our podcast, even in our name. Like, this is God's plan. Mm-hmm. And what's your part in his plan? Not yeah. not our plan. What's God's part in it? Yeah. It's totally reversed. So I think that is very important to remember because, like you said, super whipped out of context all the time. It's also important to consider the circumstances of the actual author. So I, d- I don't want to d- detract from the fact that he is being moved along by the Holy Spirit in the things. He's being inspired in what he's writing. So this is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul. It still sounds like Paul. But his actual circumstances that he is a thankful prisoner. Mm -hmm. And he has expressed that in his letter. Like he is um, a prisoner because of expressing the gospel. And he has come to a place where he is thankful for his imprisonment because of what it can do for the gospel. So this is not someone talking about becoming more successful, uh, I guess, in a sense that the world would see as successful. This is not someone talking about becoming more rich. This is someone actually saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me when he calls me to be very poor and when he calls me to be very wealthy, when he comes me to calls me to be very uncomfortable and when he calls me to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. So it is actually like I, I would say again, like keeping Christ at the center equips you for literally everything. And I think mm-hmm. that's what he's saying. Like I have learned. He actually says it that way. I've learned the secret. Um I, of being content. Yeah, being content. Like Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is a verse about being content despite our circumstances. So it's, you know, I this verse is everywhere. Uh, many times it is not surrounded by the other verses that surround it. And that has not been helpful uh, to Philippians 4.13. And I would think Paul would be slightly disappointed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, again, I just think it's really important because I can think of even myself, a lot of, I think everybody goes through it when life's going great and then all of a sudden something wrong happens Mm -hmm. or something bad happens or something like really, truly awful, terrible, like even like the death of someone Mm -hmm. and we can throw our hands in the air and say, what is God doing? Like, why is he doing this to me? Um, And I can think of 
you know, like very serious situations in our own lives. I don't think I have to go into total detail for, but there have been moments where I just throw my arms. I'm like, what are you doing, God? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, what did we do wrong? Like, we have this mentality of like, I I must have really screwed up. Like, I must have really disappointed God. And I think ultimately it's been like a challenge and I'm certainly not like perfect or there at all. But it has been a challenge to like really consider the circumstances when those things happen. Like, okay, like what is the Lord trying to teach me in this moment? Like, I don't like it. It's very uncomfortable. But like, what does he require of me? What does he want from me so that I can experience the peace of God that will be with me when I'm practicing those things? Mm -hmm. So that rounds out like the super famous passages. It's worth noting just like two two quick final things. Um, Paul does formally recognize that the the church in Philippi was one of the first churches to support him financially uh, in the work of the gospel, and he's thankful for that. And his salutation at the end of the letter includes verse 22, all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. It is possible that he is applying Caesar's household to anybody that's in government service. Uh, it's also possible that he is actually aware of the gospel getting closer and closer to Caesar's house, like the ruler of Rome. And it, it's important to note that, like, if you go all the way back to when we were reading in Acts, this started out as a very, very small group of people that were believers in Jesus. And now this thing is starting to take take root, take hold, and it is actually affecting and either one is significant. One, it's either affecting government officials or two, it's actually affecting people in Caesar's literal household as a huge thing for the gospel. And it shows how powerful the gospel is, because at this time, I think it would have been very difficult to believe uh, that there were authentic Christians close to Caesar, and there were. So it's it's just a great thing to be reminded that God is always at work. The Holy Spirit is always on the move, and sometimes it like God is actually deeply affecting um, the last person that you would expect. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how that salutation would have struck the Philippian believers, and that winds up uh the book of philippians it's it's, it's an incredible book uh, i think it's a very encouraging book i would say like philippians 4 if you need encouragement read it for yourself god's word is more important than our words uh, and so we'll we'll leave you i think there's a plenty of your parts weaved in and out of this uh, episode but if you take verse 13 take it for what it is and not what we make it into <laughs> read it in context please uh, and take it as a reminder to be content in christ as a very helpful reminder so we'll be back again literally today because we were late um with uh colossians chapter one we'll see you over there Hey, before we get into the reading, we want to tell you quickly about Logos Bible Software. It's very helpful to us as we prep for the podcast, and we can offer it to you at a discounted rate. There's two links in our description. One will get you the Logos uh, Fundamentals Pack for 50 bucks, which is a great price. The other one will get you a percentage off any package that you want. We use it often. We think it'll be useful to you. And if you use that link, you'll be helping out the podcast. So go check that out. With that in mind, here's today's reading. Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Eudia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. 
And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. Don't forget, you can find us on just about every social media platform and YouTube. Let us know what you thought of today's episode, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them there. You can also reach out to us directly at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. As always, if you don't have a Bible, or if you'd like to use the one that we use, uh, reach out to us via email, and we'll be happy to send one to you. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow.